Now, I brought this up yesterday or a few days ago because I wanted to watch it, but I said that I didn't want to watch it without talking to somebody first. There is a creator that I know that I'm a big fan of known as Wait in the Wings. Wait in the Wings makes uh, sort of theater content, sort of Broadway, musicals, whatever. It's actually very interesting to me as somebody who enjoys theater but not a theater kid. No, we watched the Spider-Man one a long time ago and we were a fan. He made this WWF one. There was something called WWF New York way back when I was a kid and I always wondered what the hell that was. I reached out to Wait in the Wings. I said, hey, would you mind if I watch this on stream? If not, I totally understand what you do is way harder than what I do. And making a video like this to have one guy watch it with a chat. You know, I don't want to do that if you don't want it. He reached back. He said, no, it's fine. So we're going to, I'm, I'm going to watch this. I would highly recommend you guys check out this Fun Home one. Fun Home rules. Mal and I watched this the other day because we're a big fan of this. But these are great videos and we're going to watch this one right now. At the height of their popularity, the World Wrestling Federation sought to infuse the space with a new type of attitude. <laughs> Bro, I forgot about UPN. UPN used to be the shit for other people, not for me. They would just air garbage all the time. <laughs> I miss being a wrestling fan. I feel like everybody would. It's so weird to me. When shit like this is but so popular for a, a short time and then just goes away. You know what I mean? Happening in Times Square during this time. The once grungy and unsafe symbol of a city in decay was becoming a must see destination for tourists and big business. Wait, that this is what Times Square was like? I thought Times Square was always this like big glorious hub of culture. I didn't know that it was so sleazy. Sex shops got outlawed. It was all strip clubs. In Times Square? Never saw a taxi driver? I did, but I always thought he was in a different part of New York. I was like, oh, he's in the bad part. He is in, I don't know, the Bronx. I don't know. I didn't know he was in Times Square. When I go to New York, so I stay in Times WWF Square in Manhattan. So I, I in figured it's just bad other places. And I don't know. Importantly, what can it tell us about the unforgiving underbelly of the crossroads of the world? I don't know. Tell me. Any semblance of the glitz or glamour that dominated the 80s was overshadowed by a grunge-filled cloud of counterculture. And nothing showcased this better than pro wrestling. The never-ending conflict between good, evil, and whatever the big show is. Now, sure, <laughs> it's easy to dismiss professional wrestling for being I love fake, that clip of him the crying. The matches are predetermined. <laughs> Pro wrestling <laughs> seems so funny. It's so bizarre to me that this is can people see stuff like a medium, this? you know? It's so dumb. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. He powerbombed a 90-year-old woman. Pro wrestling was inescapable. With the cable ratings war between the World Wrestling Federation's Monday Night Raw and its competitor, World Championship Wrestling's Monday Nitro, propelling it into the mainstream. Basically think of the Monday Night Wars like Coke versus Pepsi, but with a tank. Apparently there was never an actual but tank. Isn't that crazy? Apparently that's like a, a Mandela effect thing. A lot of people think that they actually drove a tank, but they never did. That's not a tank. No, it's a Jeep. Is Vince McMahon. They advertise it like a tank money. now? Okay. A lot. McMahon wasn't afraid to get a beer bath from a Texas rattlesnake or get kicked in the grapefruits by his wife on a pay-per-view. McMahon would do anything as long as he thought it was best for business. He's a fucking With carny. WWF, McMahon I can't wait for this old man to turn into dust. He will never die. He only looks older and older. There is a portrait of Vince McMahon as he was backstage. And every year it ages. Decided that it was time to attempt diversifying the brand. He's too angry to die. The company attempted branching out a few times before. McMahon even spent ten million dollars to buy a Debbie Reynolds themed casino in Las Vegas, with the hopes of rebranding it into the WWF style. Debbie Reynolds? Who? She's in Singing in the Rain. I don't know who this is. I've never heard of this woman. I guess an old star. She was on Kid Possible. And Rugrats? What the fuck? However, after the mock-ups were designed, the project ultimately oh, died shit! a silent death when McMahon realized that the burden of running a casino 
just wasn't worth it. Bro, betcha that on the, the Vegas the Strip? Project. This shit? Oh my god, that's insane. It's also worth noting that he's done a lot of disturbing things behind the scenes that I'm not going to dive into here. Because really yeah, dude, I was going to say, I'm shocked that like this video came out at this time because he's in the news right now. So he's under all this fire and like there's all these accusations of what he's been doing. And they were like, Vince McMahon will be on the show tonight. And he came out and he he showed up on on TV and he was like, I'm still here and I'll be here forever. And then he left. It's so weird. The guy is a fucking carnival attraction. He can't help it. He's been on each show since. Wait, really? He keeps showing up? I feel like no wrestlers are normal people. At least not the old ones. And if you're not fucked up, you're like Bret Hart and you're bitter because everybody was so fucked up, you know? A crazy idea that would only work. Carney is the insight. They're all Carnies. First like <laughs> went home. No one place has played a bigger role in the promotion's nearly 60-year history as New York City. Professional wrestling was as ingrained as baseball and cheap pizza. Really? The only thing possibly more popular in New York City during this time? Theme restaurants. Instead of something ah, like an Applebee's. Where like a Planet Hollywood. Into a yeah, 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 generic yeah. environment to eat mediocre <laughs> overpriced. What the fuck is happening here? Why did he make this image? Why did he spend all this time to make this 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 image <laughs> he could have just posted an applebee's food why did he do that Theme restaurants transport <laughs> patrons to another world of fantasy and whimsy while providing them with mediocre Not overpriced food. food in a revitalized times square heavily reliant on tourism theme restaurants appear to be <laughs> a gold mine to vince mcmahon and he wanted to cash in on the city <laughs> he considered himself to be a mogul <laughs> Oh, this is good editing. In this is great editing. McMahon signed a $24.5 million lease for a 46,000 square foot space. Oh my right God. In the heart of it all. That's Paramount not that much Peter money. Oh, this was in the 90s, right? Been right, right, right. Yeah. Before this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To varying levels of success. And what you gonna do in the Mall of America, brother, when Hulk Hogan, <laughs> Pasta Mania, and all my Pasta Maniacs <laughs> Why you? pasta? Why would he make pasta? He should be a meat guy. Pasta mania is running wild. Did you know that Hulk Hogan was a commentator for the National Pokemon Championship back in 2006? <laughs> we got to get him for this Smash Brothers shit. What was he even saying? I don't think Hulk Hogan could name three Pokemon. He doesn't know any of these. Then again, neither do I. I don't know what that guy's name is. I know that's Mugkip. He knows Pikachu, maybe. That's it. He can probably name more than you. We both know that's not true. Come on. WWF New York wasn't just going to be a theme restaurant. As one of the owners put it, it was going to be an entertainment complex with a retail store, a nightclub, a, a nightclub? Want to go hang rates. out at the and WWF nightclub? Arcade. The renovations cost $16 million. Jesus. Nearly I've been to Times Square. It's mid as hell. No, Times Square is great. You have to go to Times Square to see it. Because the sensory overload of lights is absurd. I'm not saying it's great. I'm just saying you have to go there to see it, to understand it at that scale. It's crazy. The most standout thing about Times Square are the pigeons. They don't care about people at all. No, pigeons in urban areas don't give a shit. Dude, in Daytona, the pigeons were walking up to me. Those are some fucked up birds. Theoretically, the restaurant had everything to make it a success. It was a great location, and wrestling was at the pinnacle of its popularity. Yeah, this shit should have been. A hardcore fan base. Practically, however, the restaurant faced a difficult climb up the ladder of success. The once thriving theme restaurant bubble of the mid 90s busted once the new millennium rolled around. <laughs> Across the globe, sales at once popular theme restaurants tumbled as more and more venues shuttered their doors. WWF New York. But still, there's a lot of rainforest cafes. Time. They're everywhere, the and I don't understand the why. The idea of predicting how the entertainment complex would actually perform. Children? Yeah, but children also love wrestling. Although I guess back then it wasn't a children's thing. 
Like, this is all rated R shit. You know what I mean? My kids just went to a birthday at Rainforest Cafe. Yeah, I feel like kids love that stuff. But, like, kids don't like Planet Hollywood. The Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde restaurant in NYC is still around. I think, I think at a certain point, you go over the hill of, like, how can this sustain itself? And then it's just like, oh, that's like a, that's an attraction now. You know what I mean? Like at a certain point, that just becomes your, your legacy sustains you. Other theme restaurants found themselves trapped in non-flexible concepts that rapidly became outdated. Whereas WWF New York possessed lasting appeal thanks to an ever-changing TV landscape. It also had the added benefit of exclusivity. I forgot about this poster. This fucking creepy po- Hold on. <laughs> Bro, this unforgiven poster used to give me nightmares. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's terrifying. This used to freak me out. <laughs> they never made anything else like this. Uh, where'd he go? What? He just takes off? I don't think they've ever made anything else like that. So I, I feel like uh, <laughs> they probably knew how bad it was. Holy shit, that rules. WWF stood out in Times Square's ever-growing sanitized landscape. Its 30-foot scratch logo providing one last that looks like gasp shit. of 1990s counterculture. But surprisingly, the angsty attitude of the WWF stopped as soon as someone walked through the doors. Even though it was a wrestling-themed restaurant, the space was surprisingly light on any wrestling decor or... Dude, this looks miserable. Look at these fucking lights. That's so bright. This is so hot. The lights are bearing right down on you. I, I, this does not look pleasurable. I wouldn't want to be under Restaurant. lights like this. The space was surprisingly Just gonna light burn alive. Wrestling decor or memorabilia. If you're bald, you might like actually get really burned. Distinguishing it as a WWF restaurant were the wall of TVs playing a short cycle of clips from the shows and a never-ending loop of wrestler theme songs playing <laughs> over the speakers. <laughs> Unlike the Nitro Grills menu, which boasted items like the Gold Burger, <laughs> the Booker T-Bone, <laughs> the Superplex Salmon Filet, and chicken tenders called Broken Fingers. Oh, God. Despite the ripe opportunity to have menu items like the stone cold spaghetti. I wouldn't order pasta that said it was cold. I don't know about that. All patrons got <laughs> was an underwhelming hamburger. He's got a puke! But whatever the venue lacked in decor and food, this it attempted is to make killing up me, dude. in promotion. WWF always found a way to feature the restaurant in their live broadcasts. One second, a guest would be eating a steak. Wait, that's not a steak. Aware. <laughs> this is actually an aware moment. In the storyline, Big Boss Man, who was a policeman, fed Al Snow his dog. I don't remember why, but yeah, Big Boss Man was like a piece of shit. This is such a weird picture to explain. Why are they in a hotel? Every Monday and Tuesday night, wrestling fans from the area gathered to watch episodes of Raw and SmackDown on many of the restaurant's televisions. By the way, that's actually mad fun. I highly recommend it. If you have never gone to a bar to watch pro wrestling, absolutely recommend it. It is hilarious. They get extremely invested. They get drunk, and they fucking hate certain people. Dude, I went back when John Cena was big. I met so many bar people that fucking hated John Cena. I saw so many people that swore they hated John Cena's fucking guts. It was unbelievable. Same with UFC or boxing. Yeah, but at least UFC or boxing is real, right? The passion for people is the same. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, people still get just as invested, but shit's, shit's amazing. There's a guy that kept... So CM Punk's real name is, is Phil, and there's this guy who's like, Oh, yeah, Phil's not happy about that. He was, like, acting like he was his best friend. Like, oh, yeah, Phil definitely didn't want to do that. So what the fuck are you talking? It's weird. Adult fans are weird. No, the real highlight of the complex was the store. According to the New York Times, oh, shit. nearly 40% of revenue for theme restaurants during the height of their popularity came from merchandise sales. Oh, yes. Obviously. And at WWF New York, it was easy to see why. The shop was a wrestling fan's paradise. I guess this Magazines, was before the internet, clothes, right? 
lunchboxes. It's kind of interesting. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Kane masks must have gone crazy. Was Bro, Rey Mysterio. But it still is, wasn't enough. He built a career how much of off a of children side. buying his mask. Rey Mysterio's entire career could be attributed to 11 year olds buying the mask. WWF's Vince McMahon emerged victorious from the Monday Night Wars by purchasing WCW for $4.2 million. That's On it? On the surface, things were going extremely well for McMahon and $4.2 million? He spent twenty four on the restaurant. The quarterly earnings report told a different story. The company also suffered an increase in expenses, jumping up to $25.6 million Jeez. in 2001. The reason? Increased advertising, promotion, and consultant fees, as well as high overhead costs <laughs> from WWF New York. Why well, they got Lance Storm mopping the floors? Following September 11th, the weakness of the model was more visible than ever. Uh, Not only were okay. locals staying away because it was a theme restaurant, they were also staying away because they felt it was just a place for wrestling fans. Yeah. WWF New York had been branded the wrestling place. Yeah. Oh, is this so let's the go WWF thing? Yeah, 1961. Yeah. A man named Max Nicholson started an organization dedicated to funding Cute. the protection of. Did you know pandas are really fucking dumb? Apparently, that's true. Do you know what a group of pandas is called? An embarrassment. That's not a joke. A Swiss organization named the World Wildlife Fund. <laughs> the w an embarrassment w of pandas. In 2000, the World <laughs> Wrestling Federation held a pay-per-view in London, breaching an agreement stating the WWF logo would only be used in the United States. And within no time, the World Wildlife Fund sued McMahon. Yeah. The World Wrestling Federation was forced to legally change its name. A new marketing campaign began airing on WWF programming with the phrase, get the F out, as Bro, that's a clever... I remember seeing this, I was like, damn, that's smart. That's pretty good marketing. Considering their sort of vibe at the time, very the smart. World good Wrestling shit. Federation Not bad. officially became known as World Wrestling Entertainment. The name change also allowed the company to finally reposition WWF New York in a way that could potentially attract non-wrestling fans into the nightclub portion. Mm. Later that year, they dropped WWF New York Ooh, and get it, renamed Jeff. it The <laughs> World. It was no secret that the restaurant was losing money. But as the <laughs> accountants... <laughs> Wait, what are they looking the at? Who's in there? Everybody's looking at the other side of the street. I don't know why that's so funny. Oh, is that David Blaine? Ah. As the WWE accountants looked over financial reports for the Imagine space, needing that much attention. A Look, everybody, I'm ICE! Transactions. Just in case yourself in ICE in front of New York prior, City. It in Times Square, that several company checks were used to pay a company named CSG Construction nearly four hundred and thirty-seven thousand dollars. It came to light that a former manager for the world named Kenton Jenkins embezzled money from the venue for nearly <gasps> a year to pay off his mortgage and to even buy himself a one hundred and sixty Jenkins. Home. The scheme only ended because Jenkins got fired for an entirely unrelated issue that June. The so they Post would have never caught him. fired because the restaurant had not performed as well as we thought it should. Dude. If the restaurant was still banging, that guy would buy multiple boats. Considering that around the same time, Toys R Us in Times Square was paying roughly $12 million a year for its space. Oh my god. Rent prices alone were enough to put the WWE. Times Square is a, a nightmare, headlock. dude. In February of 2003, just one month after Monday Night Raw's 10th anniversary, Vince McMahon's Damn. wife, Linda, announced that the world would cease all operations. It was only up for like four years? WWE's money into different efforts. That sucks. Officially shuttering its doors in April of 2003. Oh, that's terrible. Right across the street from the Paramount Theater sits the one Times Square building. Considering every square inch is masked by billboards and LED screens, you, you should go. It's easy you to should forget see it, the you guys. gorgeous structure hidden underneath. The building has oh, long what? loomed over Times Square's ever changing landscape. I've never seen it naked. Yeah, I've never seen that building naked. It looks great. After WWF New York closed, 
The Hard Rock Cafe took over with Unforgiven is added on its food. And over 16 years later, the restaurant is still turning a profit. Really? And yet, regardless of its failings, WWF New York represented a glorious So Hard Rock Cafe is there now and they're making money? That's City. crazy. Wait a minute. Oh my god, wait, my window is open. Oh fuck. My god, I've been yelling and do and yelling about this shit for like an hour and a half. And my neighbors, if they were outside, it was a nice day out tonight too. Oh god. Big fan of Wait in the Wings. You guys should check this guy out. Uh, like I said, he's put out a bunch of videos that we like. Check him out. He's got a fun home video if you like fun home. Good movie, bro. Good movie. Good movie. Wait, wait in the wings. Are you here? Are you in the chat? Coney is streaming the New York video, and I'm so ashamed he doesn't know who Debbie Reynolds is. You think I would, right? Wait in the wings. If you are here, thank you so much for that movie. Excellent movie. Excellent movie. Big fan. That's Carrie Fisher's mom? Wait, really? I had no idea. Did not know that.